Tonight we have James. James, who is Noah's dad, father? Both. Both? All the above. Soon to be pop, pop I hear? Yes, yes. Grandchild is on the way. Grandson. So Hopefully like, bef- after the 16th, right? Well, after the podcast. Yeah. Not That's all we care about. Any yeah, time at this point. We're not. We're, we're past the 10th. Yep. So... Yep. Sooner the better now. I was more or less referring to the Father's Day gift. Oh, well, that's, mm. true. When, that's true. One of you was wanting the baby sooner and one's wanting it later, right? Right. You Be- want it after. Before Father's Day saves a little money, yeah. For On your behalf. Right, on my behalf. And after is going to get you one, probably not. To be honest, not. I won't get a gift either way. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and bring a baby in. We both know this is for show anyway. Whenever bring we it in. <laughs> We're getting him on film. <laughs> Yeah, we're 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 ready. We're we're get up. I say we. Um, I have really no job here. Yeah, the play place built. Go visit. Yeah, yeah. We got all the stuff built in the house. Okay. We got stuff at at uh, my house. Got stuff all the stuff at his house, and um, we have a car seat for the golf cart. Perfect. <laughs> it's ready in? to go. It's yeah. in. Yep. It's in. In the middle, I assume. Well, it, it'll go. It'll go here beside me. I okay. drive. Yep. Roman. That's every time. Do you drive every time? Every time. Okay. Right. Just making sure. Roman goes here. <laughs> he yep. taught me to drive and then pushed me back to the other seat. <laughs> That's and, about how the extent the of back. the golf cart driving. In the back. Yeah, because we've got a back seat facing oh, the golf okay. cart. Yep. So he'll go. He goes to the back. Yeah. Yeah. So that way you and Roman can talk. Right. Roman's yeah. here. Right. I'm here. And you want him under the shade. Absolutely. You know. Right. Yeah. Covering. Well, back seat has shade, too, in this car, though. Well, you're still going back there. I know. Just letting you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we got that. Shades a non-factor. Of, 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 all the, of, of all the things Noah's, you know, we talk about or this, that, and that, he'll say, Dad, when did you do this? What do you think about that? The one that keeps coming up is, came up, Dad, when did you first take me to play golf? That's, <laughs> that's, that's an important question. Uh-huh. That's uh-huh. an important question. Dad, at what age did you fling me out of the golf cart on accident? <laughs> what age was that? Did that happen? That, that question. Accident with up. air quotes? Yes. Accident, <laughs> if you ask one person. If you ask the other, not such accident, you know. <laughs> When you're old enough to keep score. Right. right. Yeah. You weren't writing down. Yeah. Right numbers. How old were you, 10? Oh, I was around 12. Age, yeah. I remember it was way too much drama for what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> we had this where you, you go up in a little turnaround thing. And I remember the hole. Yeah, I did too. Uh, on Roland, the cart path or three. off? Well, the cart was on the cart path. Okay. It went off the cart path. Okay. <laughs> it was Rolex 3 at the time. Was it three? Yeah. It was okay. after the par three, the par four. The yep. Yep. The one that I could drive. Mm-hmm. Well. And <laughs> Deba- I don't, Debatable. I don't, <laughs> but go ahead. I don't care. You don't have to lean in the mic for that. <laughs> Letting the people Make know. Sure they hear. I, yeah. So I don't uh, know. I don't remember if, if I had a bad hole I, I don't, or I just was taking off like normal and he wasn't <laughs> in good. I, I don't know. But, you know, I turned the curve and he, he just, you, you, and you would think he'd grab something. Right? Yeah, there's two. I mean, you're 10, there's 11 poles, years old. There's handles. Let's there's let's clarify. He said I got stuff. in the cart. He just I was goes single cheek, rolling out I was like one, a sack of flour. One, <laughs> one cheek in the cart, one cheek out. wasn't all the way in yet, and he accelerates with a left turn. It spun me off to the side. Yeah, there, it was a Did, falling. Didn't even try to grab onto something. <laughs> just didn't rolling have up like a sack of potatoes. <laughs> My son is a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Lessons okay. were learned that day. Uh-huh. I don't think it hurt you, though. I think you just remember it for some reason. Yeah, it was fine. Hmm. That, I, think well, that, I think that was actually the last day you beat me in golf. No. Wow. Well, about actually, 10 years actually, old. Actually, um, <laughs> uh, we, we, we have recent activity for this. So, in addition to all this other excitement, yesterday was Noah's birthday, the 10th, right? Yep. So, we've, we've got a, a, a tradition where we've done ever since he could play golf is we take a golf trip. Yep. So this year we couldn't go very far. We got baby coming, right? So, you yep. know, if the baby had came last week, we might have went somewhere off. But, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> we uh, – uh, but our course is closed on Monday. Okay. So we go down below uh, Jeff City to uh, – Red Ridge. Red, Redwood. Red, Redfield. 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 Okay, yeah. Redfield, yep. yes. And it was agreed upon that I got five pops – in Strokes. stroke or, or okay. holes, I get a pop on, and then we match play. He was done after seventeen, buried him at seven, on hole seventeen. Mm. 
So he, happy he, birthday. He lost just Monday, as a matter of fact. Happy time. birthday. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's why there's no Father's Day. Yet. Still <laughs> a little <true>. sore. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could just attribute it to that. <laughs> so if people haven't put it together yet, Noah, you've got a son on the way. Yes. Come in anytime. Anytime. You're what, 20s? 26. 26. As of yesterday. 26. James, first grandbaby, right? First, yes, yeah. first. Super excited? Be hard to be more excited. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. More excited now or when you were a first-time father? Um, or not comparable? I, boy, I, I don't know. I don't remember. I mean, I was excited back then. Yeah. Um, it was probably easier to be excited then because you were less nervous. I mean, opposite. Easier to be excited now. Whereas when you're a first time father like I am, it's just a lot of nerves yeah, and being everything. ready to go. Yeah, worried about the process. Mm-hmm. So less nervous. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna say more excited now. More excited now. Because mm-hmm. okay. there's not all the there was so much other stuff. Yeah, but but I, I really don't remember either. How old were you when when you had Noah? I had Noah. Yeah. No, is no Noah is the oldest, right? He's the oldest. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. yeah. Got two, um, uh, a daughter that's eighteen months younger than Noah. So we were talking about this the other night. I was <laughs> yeah. twenty. Talking about yesterday. Four. Yeah, we've been thinking twenty five this whole time because this was our century year, where or whatever you call it. He was fifty, and I'm twenty five. Yeah. Until yesterday, but so it was like the and if Roman had been born prior to yesterday, yesterday it would have been fifty twenty five was born. Yeah. So it would have been kind of cool. Yeah. But he had been lying to me this whole time anyway, so it didn't matter. <laughs> he was 24. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gary, how old were you with uh, when you had your first? 26. 26. It's a good age. 26. And your oldest is 39? 30. <laughs> okay. <that's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> <laughs> math was a Just little... Just in case people want to get math going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's old. So... No, that'd be 36. Um... I think that matters, right? The age in which you're having kids. There's some maturity that happens, I think, between, well, supposed to happen, <laughs> between 20 and, say, what, 27. Now, you're born again when you had your first. Yes. And James? Yeah. Born again. So you've been raised in a Christian home your entire life. Yeah. I think that's important, too. For sure. Especially with this list of questions that I have. <laughs> Probing questions. Pertaining to fatherhood. I think I'm more nervous about the How old were you, John? I was, I'm I believe I was 22. 22. 13. Let's do a little bit of math. 23, I would have been. No, 22. She just turned 14. Sorry. Riley's 14. Beck is 10. Will be 11. So, yeah. It's 22, which is... I was young. <laughs> I was young, you know. Bri taught me some stuff, as I'm sure I'm of sure all of our kids. Stuff. I mean, yeah. That's you know, figure it out and grow with it. And yeah, yeah. Did either of you have a plan going into fatherhood? Like, this is how I'm going to raise my kids, or was it? Let's see what today holds. Yeah, we had like. Um, like a plan, you know, because you, when I say we, me and and, and my wife uh, Cheryl, uh, you know, you you how you gonna how you gonna raise the baby? So in a perfect world, you've got the little, you know, the the eat, play, sleep, yep. repeat, yep. you know, and then sleeps longer and longer. Yep. Well, he he no one ever slept hardly any. <laughs> um, played fine. Wasn't a great eater, never slept. So you've got the plan on the procedure for the whole deal, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, probably less planning was done on how you're going to raise with all the teaching. That, that stuff you just kind of, I mean, you know yeah. you're going to raise them a certain way. You're going to raise yep. them in. But you don't lay all that stuff out. Yeah. Right? You just know you're going to yep. You're going to do that. And then yep. what I learned later is you teach you teach your son all your favorite hobbies, and then there you go. Young, <laughs> young, young people, please listen to what he just said. Yeah. Can you repeat that one more time? <laughs> I think it's important. I'll yeah. tell you, this will clarify right here. I asked him the other day, 
we were riding in the golf cart, of course. And I said, I said, um, what did I ask you exactly? I said, what did I, what did you do to like make me with football? And because I love football and golf, same stuff he likes. I said, ask him some type of how did I come to like all this stuff. He said, well, I didn't give you a choice. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is one thing I want to say is watching James and Noah and Gary, you can attest to this. It feels like you guys have a relationship that's kind of like my dad and I's are best friends. Mm-hmm. I've heard Noah say, "That's my best friend." How does it make you feel to be a dad and know that your son calls you your best friend? Well, um, since I've been doing golf Monday, a lot better. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, sure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, I, it 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 uh, you know it does make me feel good that he that he thinks that way. Um, cause yeah, we, you know, we like all the same stuff. We do all the same stuff, hang out, uh, all the time. So, you know, you, you, you probably set out to, um, not trying to be your child's best friend because you had to raise a child, yep. right? Yep. But when, as they get older and, um, yeah, I, it's, it's a great compliment. Probably one of the greatest. Yeah. To be, um, I'd consider myself a younger father, you know, a younger dad of younger kids. Is it camera Clearly. I, I don't know. Okay. I just kind of, if it is, people might question that, but carry on. <laughs> I didn't mean to throw you off your question right there. Y- younger father. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to get something good. I'm, I'm teeing you up here real nicely. <laughs> Won't be hard. Won't be hard. Um, <laughs> Um, I've heard both Noah and Josh, Pastor Gary, your son, um, just exude compliments about their dads and it takes a certain type of dad. I don't really love the word father just you personally. Don't? I don't, I don't. Um, if my kids call me father. They're going to get the Wi-Fi taken away from them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> just feels like so King James. Yeah. King James <laughs> and strict so i like dad not i don't really love daddy too formal. yeah too yeah. formal um so it takes a certain type of dad and a certain type of relationship that is formed over years and years and years to get those types of and i say compliments but it's really just words of endearment you know and um so i want to press into what what does relationship look like between father and son throughout the years and Gary I think when I ask you first because um, Josh when I was speaking with him we were talking about some adversity in life and and so I asked him I'm like what Pastor Gary looked like during adversity and he's like man he's solid he's just constant I believe is the word he used so to get that type of response out of somebody you as a dad have to live a certain way Monday through Friday and Saturday and Sunday, you know, yeah. all the business hours plus some. And so what does that look like as a father when things get tough? Um, we always pursue connection. So always pursue the relationship. Yeah. Um, even when we had to discipline or bring discipline of some sort, um, we would always come in and restore them within the hour and restore the relationship so he and all my kids if if there was discipline involved and there was disconnection of some sort there was always restoration within the hour and we would talk it out we would let them know that we loved them um and we tried to be the same person outside of church as we were in church we tried to treat people Uh, the same inside the church as well as at home. And so um, that's probably where he gets the constant, um, that it wasn't two different personalities or two different standards. or um, And we always just supported them in whatever they were doing. Yeah. Um, If it was a ball game, if it was a, a play or something like that in school, we were always there. We always made arrangements to be there. So they would see us in the audience or the, the stands, even if they weren't playing or 
uh, didn't have the key part. We were there yeah. just as interested as as the next guy. Now, I'm just going to assume that life was easy and there was no adversity. Yeah. <laughs> so that was probably pretty easy for you to do. Um, <laughs> adversity has been my companion. <laughs> and you just um, – you get up and you go to work the next day. You get up and you go. Yeah. You don't you don't crawl in a hole, you don't lash out, you don't take it out on the family. Try not to. Um and you just you just did whatever it took to to supply for your family to um whether that's emotionally or financially or you know, there's we tried not to let them know what was going on. Didn't play it out like, you know, we're buying these shoes for your basketball team and we're going to probably have to eat macaroni for the next yeah. week. You know? Yeah. Um, no, you just you act like it's no big deal. Yeah, we're going to get you supplied and yep. and figure it out privately. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But we're always after the connection. If there was any kind of disconnection uh, when they got older, we always pursued the connection. Yeah. In the relationship over uh, the relationship with someone else. Yeah. You know, they were the most important part. So that's awesome. Yeah. James? Oh, I didn't restore it. I'd let some fester for a good week. <laughs> let them let them really doubt their the status about in the family. <laughs> yeah, you know. The, yeah. After the discipline settled in, just to just really true, lock that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it, it's it's one of the. You know, it's one of the toughest things when you uh, are at odds with anybody, right? Yeah. But when you're at odds with your with a family member, yeah, nobody likes that, right? I mean, yeah. uh, you gotta you gotta. Uh, do what you got to do. I mean, it's it's your job to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's uh, so uncomfortable um, until you resolve. Yeah. And and yeah, you know, um, kids are all different too. Uh, Noah was he he didn't have to be like heavily disciplined or disciplined a lot. Um, his personality is such where he just he gets it real quick. Yeah. Uh, acknowledges whatever was was wrong and so it wasn't like we had to teach a lot of hard hard lessons right yeah. but in the same way that personality is one that you know it's just it, it, it's it's turmoil when there's when you've had to really you know get on him until you can yeah um but yeah you like gary's saying you you know you follow up and and the big thing is uh you just let them know um that you love them Yep. You, you don't have to back down. You, you, whatever discipline was, you mentioned taking Wi-Fi away. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I haven't done it yet for, for <laughs> us, uh, at least in the, I guess from the time they got a phone, it, it was, uh, you discipline with the phone, right? Yeah. Take the phone away and things. Yeah. <laughs> in, uh, when, when him and his sister got phones, I don't remember what version of the, iPhone it was. Oh, it wasn't a Nokia? I guess. <laughs> no, I started out with the flip phone. Track phone, flip. Oh, the flip? You guys remember the Nokia the I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, the with brick? The uh, my deal. first one was. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Play Snake on it? Um, you know, you can go in and lock lock it down. Yep. Just like with our iPads here, we lock down to a certain app, right? Yep. Well, the phones, you can do that too. And so he's, he's driving or at least out with friends. And so, you know, part of the reason you justify giving them a phone is so you can get a hold of them, they get a hold of you when something's going wrong or whatever. But, you know, lock the phone down. Right? Yeah. So he can call four people. Um, <laughs> you had fun with this. Look at the smile on his face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, knows, he knows exactly what, what I'm thinking of. Because he was sitting on the couch one day, and um, he was, you know, you, you play with your phone, right? And he was, I said, what are you do? I said, you can't do anything on your phone. What are you doing? He said, I'm just looking at two addresses. Feel like I could do something on my, on my phone. Right here. <laughs> just flipping through my contacts. <laughs> on both of them. Reading names. Yeah. <laughs> but you were on it. Killing time. That's all that mattered. That's all that mattered, I guess. Just want to be on that phone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kind of want to shift to you. Yep. Um, so you and your dad have built a relationship, I assume, that you treasure. Yeah. And so just 
something that people may not know about you is any time that you and I have spent time where it's just us, you're constantly questioning me, <laughs> which I like. Like I like the, hey, so did you experience this when you were – I like that. That's fun. That shows me that you care about being a dad, which is means you're going to probably raise a good kid, um, which the world needs. Um, we'll get back to that soon. But uh, out of this conversation, out of the questions we've asked, do you have like in your heart – What's, what's your plan? What's your goal for the relationship with Roman? Oh. That's what I would have said, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope for a relationship like me and him have. Yeah. I really hope for that. And you... You know, it's, I don't know. I really don't know. It's kind of hard to... Think about, yeah. I don't know. Take it a day at a time. It's almost easier to see the stuff that's going on in the world. You're like, man, how do I avoid that? Yeah, you know. Yep. So I, I really, <laughs> I don't know. I, Keep, I think that's the yeah. best answer. One day at a time. Yeah, I think that's the only way you can really build a great relationship is one day at a time. You know, I. Uh, have this theory that you can't make it 70 years without making it through today hmm. in, in terms of marriage, you know? So I think that's a great answer. Yeah. Um, I kind of want to ask, like, let's, let's get to some juicy stuff like kingdom minded fatherhood. So how did you implement Christian, not just Christian beliefs, right? Cause everybody has Christian beliefs and, a lot of people claim to be Christians, but we can see the fruit of their ha house and know whether this is true or not. So I want to know, like, in the mundane days, the little times, how did you implement kingdom principles like and try to embody the father as a father? Can I say something here? Please. So I think this is this is also answers to your previous question, but as you say that, that's what him and my mom did a great job of is you make church the priority, make God the priority instead of it's something later, you know what I mean? It's yeah. so cuz we did we moved around a couple times when I was a kid and moved pretty had a pretty big move twice at least. And so both those times I remember just the only thing that was important in that move was where we're going to church. Yep. Let's find a good pastor, let's find a good home. Yeah, and I was so into music at that point. I mean, that was that was our focus, and so it wasn't like I just remember not thinking about oh we're moving oh who are we going to be friends with who are we? no it was we're moving where are we going to go to church yeah where are we going to spend our time church wise and that kind of thing so I think that's that's one thing too I want to really focus on with yeah. Roman is making that a priority yep so I knew that was a big part of my childhood yeah just being rooted and grounded yes in a church it's the most important thing it's not like it's a We'll find a church when we get there. It's that's like that's what you care about when yeah. you get somewhere new. Yep. So. Yep. Yeah. When you're when you're talking about um, the movies, talking about he was a uh, sophomore in high school, and and Shelby, my daughter, was a uh, eighth grader, I think, and uh, it it brought us all closer together because we all went somewhere new, and yeah, and uh, you know it's it's not all the time you go out to Sunday dinner and, and all you talk about is how church was. Yeah. But we had, you know, several weeks or even months or it, that was, it was just the neatest thing. We go for lunch on Sunday and that would be the conversation, you know, about uh, the church we'd been to that Sunday or whatever. Yeah. But that brought us a whole lot closer. Um, but there, there's a, there's a flip in there somewhere. So when, when your kids are younger, you're, you're choosing their friends, whether you're doing it directly. You're probably not doing it directly. You're not saying, "Hey, that kid looks like a, like an athlete." Go, go. It's not directly, but you're choosing their friends and whom you're hanging out with, right? Yeah. Yep. And whom you're doing stuff with. Yep. And so uh, you, you do tend to gravitate towards uh, friends and couples that have kids the same age. Yep. But are they folks? from a church are they folks from a, so you're kind of picking the kids that your kids are going to be around 
in those early years. Now that flips at some point. Yeah. Um, like this this move we were talking about. You know, uh, our friends, my wife and I, our friends were very much centered around their friends, right? Because it's all yeah. about them in church, in school, in yep. sports, and all that kind of stuff. And and your circles completely become tied to who they're friends with, right? So it flips yep. somewhere along the way. But in the early years, you know, um, even if you don't actively think about it day in and day out, you're, who you're friends with, who you're um, hanging out with, that's who their friends are going to be. Yeah. Um, his first friend is probably, well, it's still his best friend. You yeah. know, 20, 26 years later. Um, and still our best friends, um, too, back in Tennessee. Uh, and they were some of the first people we met at a church and, you know, kind of kind of raised kids together. Um, yeah. So that's, um, you know, part of it. And some some stuff you do plan. Like you can you can you can plan to um, say prayers every night at yeah. bedtime, say a prayer around the table when you yep. eat. You plan to, um, okay, we're going to read a Bible study, you know, yep. and the kids, when they're young anyway, they love it, they look forward to it, you're the one that's tired and you don't want to do it, and, <laughs> and you got to you gotta kind of, but that's just what just what you do, right? Yeah. Um, uh, no matter what. And then there's the, the indirect things, too, where you make maybe big decisions, but they're not something you actively think about every day. Yeah. Right. Um, yep. Where I want them to go to school, where we are going to go to church. Yep. Um, we want to get this across to them, how we're going to handle this situation in the way they can um, learn from it. You know, all those kinds of things. Yeah. So there's 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 short term day in and day out things that you're going to do. And there's there's bigger decisions you make that um, are for a goal, but they're not necessarily things you're impacting every day yeah yep there's a little story to that too where he said that you know the prayers at night or whatever something you look forward to i remember my mom was so adamant about in the morning she, she took us to school every single day me and my sister were in the back seat and every single for all of elementary school and halfway through middle school i mean we were still fifth or sixth grade when it, you know maybe when this stopped or whatever but all the way through elementary school we would have me and my sister both had a hymnal in the back seats of our car. Like in the pocket? In the pocket. Come on, let's go. And Just we, like a pee? She, <laughs> she, would, she would leave for school and say, okay, get your hymnal out. And she said, no, we'll pick a song. We're going to do this morning. Every single morning. Wow. Just without fail. And just, I mean, I was singing I'll Fly Away four mornings a week. <laughs> <laughs> and so just just stuff like that stuff you're almost annoyed with in the moment you know it's like what we're we doing this again but hey, look where i am today you know and my job and all that stuff it's just it's just huge in who we are wow. so. a hymnal in the every backseat. single morning yeah oh well and and doxology we, he, we were just hitting nail doxology <laughs> yes i remember i'll fly away oh, yeah so doxology too so they they were used to doing that and uh, if i were taking them to school for you know, for whatever reason. <laughs> and if I'm taking them to school, kind of the, the system's under stress anyway, right? Because yeah. there's something else going on. We're yep. late. Or mom's not there. Or yeah. we're running late. Or yep. in later years, we don't have the right pants, pants. instead of shorts <laughs> on. But that's a whole other story. Yep. So we get in the car and, you know, I'm thinking about uh, whatever stress there was getting everybody out of the house. And then I'm going to work after I drop them off. And I'm not thinking about singing a song, <laughs> yeah. right? I, I, I think it's great. Yeah. You know, their mom does that with them every day. That's, hey, that's, I'm not, I'm not thinking about that. They would not let that drive <laughs> carry on with that. Dad, what song are we going to sing? <laughs> oh, guys, I tell you what, let's just take a, we do, oh, no, nope, no, nope, we got to nope, sing a song. got to. <laughs> sing so, a uh, Sabbath rest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they got used to that and uh, uh, weren't going weren't gonna to do without that for the morning either. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, I laugh about it because I never heard of somebody having a hymnal in the car. Was yeah. it really a, hymnal a personal in the, back seat? in the like it was in the seat in front of us, like we were at church? <laughs> there really was a hymnal. Yeah, those wow. blue ones. Yeah, the blue ones from church, like hardback. Yeah, wow, hardback. Turn to page three forty eight. Like hymnal. Hey, that. hey, where'd she get them at? <laughs> she probably took them from church. Back <laughs> row. We don't need from to the say. back row. Where they don't need it. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's funny. That's pretty intense. So, yeah. Pastor Gary, I want to know how your relationship with Jesus translates to fatherhood. I think with before I had children, and this came with this came with Josh, our firstborn. It was um, it was about me and God, my relationship with God, and myself, and Audra, and each other, and we were in church all the time. I mean, at least three times a week if we were involved in something else for hymnals or in something. the back seat. Mm-hmm. No hymnals. Okay, I was just Ooh. just um, making we sure had, wow. we had digital screens <laughs> then. You know, we were okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We had overheads. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but when I had my first child, I can remember um, holding him and, and getting the revelation of how, how could I give up my son for someone else's mistake? I was like, I don't think I could do it. Yeah. I, I would die for him. There's something that comes on you yeah. that you would just give everything to protect your family. You yeah. know? And um, you get that revelation of how much God loves you that he gave up his only son to die in your place uh, so that you could go free and you didn't deserve it. And just that getting getting a revelation of the Father's love for me personally yeah. um, and then trying to translate that into relatable um, with the family you yeah. know just um, just always trying to put them first you know trying to make sure they they had something if we were going to have to go without eating they were going to have the food you know and, yeah. it, and it wasn't like I was feeling left out. It was just there's something in you that wants to supply for them, that yeah. wants to protect them, that wants to uh, – that you can't learn in a book. You can't learn in a Sunday school class. You can't learn from a, a video. It's just something that is birthed within you, that love for your kids, that um, this is how much more does our Father love us. We being carnal know how to give good gifts to our kids, and it's – it's fun to give gifts to your kids and surprise them for Christmas and their birthdays and stuff like that. How much more does the Father God, you know, yeah. like to give good gifts to us? And he joys in that. He doesn't give it begrudgingly yeah. he, because you're begging him for it or he makes you pray long enough for it or go to church enough times and stuff like that. It's you want to supply it before they – you want to listen to them so that – you know what they need and you want to supply that for them. And when you get older, you kind of, you have to let them grow and develop and have their own faith. But, um, there's still that, that urge to help them and make it easier for them than you had it. And so, um, I think that's, that's the way I view it. Yeah. You know, I'm hearing a lot of talk about, Craft macaroni and cheese, <laughs> let them eat first for somebody that had screens in the car. You know. <laughs> well, we see where we the, the sacrifice leisure, was. We had the big leisure van. We were making payments on it, but we had the TV in the back <laughs> and the LED lights around. Oh, yeah. I was like, I never had this as a kid. Yeah. I had the, I was, back seat converted was, to a bed, right? I was falling asleep in the back window, you know, with no seatbelts <laughs> <laughs> before it was law, you know. <laughs> It's going to say I'm hungry. Then. Go out there and watch a movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we watch it lunch. inside? <laughs> eat your lunch. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Um, since the time I was, I don't know, young, younger, I would say, I always wanted to be a dad. Like, I was excited about having a family and, yeah, being a dad. So as time gets closer and as – my relationship with Jesus develops more and more. Um, I get this revelation of legacy. Like things are going to pass away and stuff are going to fade away, but I'm going to have my kids as a legacy, which I know they'll pass away one day too. But my hope is that 
with Jesus's help that I can pass on the revelations that he's given me down to them and shape them as as people mm-hmm. and sh- eventually shape the world you know I, I feel like there's this legacy that that you get to leave as a father so with that being said no I'm gonna ask you what are you most excited about being a dad the relationship yeah that's what I'm most excited about just watching him grow up yeah and hoping for that great relationship with God one and then with me and his mom as well just I just want to build those great relationships for him and have that play out like it did throughout my childhood yeah isn't it funny um listening to that answer how I think that's everybody's drive right but as things grow and go on like the relationship's always the the thing that you're most excited about but as seasons change right you you're more or less excited about other things like that's football season I'm excited (laughs) you know I'm excited to watch Beck play some football but it's also like Briley we're making a huge decision going from homeschool to public school and so it's her first year in public school but also high school so I'm excited to see these ideas flourish you know we've been in this cocoon for whatever you know 10 years and now I get to watch her flourish Mm -hmm. into a butterfly as Mm -hmm. cliche and disgusting as that is (laughs) (laughs) I I don't like cliche but it's a huge move and this uh, fall is her first yeah her first time in public school yeah yeah um are you nervous yeah yeah why not (laughs) you know she's 14 she's 14 she's 14 just Uh, turned 14 so so every sunday morning when i ask her if she drove to church we can talk about that off recording (laughs) 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 yeah she's 14 um but so jamie and i we decided to homeschool just so that we could shape a character through Jesus on a day in and day out basis. You know, we, we were blessed. We were able to do that. Um, and so now it's like, put your money where your mouth is, you know, Mm -hmm. let's let these kids shine in the darkness. You know, like some, I, a while back, our kids were playing with this other set of kids and this other set of kids, uh, they said something silly or something. And the parents were mortified. They were so embarrassed. Oh, I'm so sorry that my kid, I think they cussed or something. I'm so sorry our kids cussed around your kids. And I'm like, I expect it. Did my kids cuss? And they were like, no. And I'm not saying that, you know, to puff up. I'm saying that we raise our kids to shine bright. And so I think some Christians get scared when it's dark. And I'm like, bring it on. Because yeah. we're going to shine, right? Like, that's yeah, that's the goal. That's awesome. And I think, too, you know, what a what a better way to learn while they're still coming home every night and they can tell you what's going on and you can still shape their response or their input or their intake of what's presented to them during the day yeah versus it being much later in life if they're out of the city or out of in a different state going to college and that's the first time that they're getting any kind of a challenge to what they were raised in and they don't have you around yeah. to uh, bounce that off of. I mean, I, I think she'll do great. Yeah. You know, I yeah. think, but I, I understand the apprehension too. every state A funny thing. Audra was taken. Um, I believe it was Josh to kindergarten. You know, she was dropping him off during the, the morning and um she'd come out she'd just be upset she's like oh my gosh it's just tough he's you know he's upset and having the separation anxiety and all this and she was too and because you're turning it over to someone else to raise your kid for a little bit and i was like why is that so hard you know i here i'll do it you know <laughs> i go in there and he's hugging me not wanting to go to class and I go, it'll be all right. And he's walking down the hall. I come out and I go, dang it. 
you know, <laughs> and I'm tearing up. I go, yeah. that's hard, <laughs> yeah. you know. Yeah. But until you go through it, I mean, you know, you just can't. Yeah. You can't comprehend what's what's coming, you know. Yeah. And it's it's not a bad thing. It's just a it's a bonding moment. But yeah, you know, it's yeah. She's asking me all the time. She's like, "Hey, Dad, if if this doesn't work, can I come back home school?" I'm like, "Listen, this this is no pressure, you know. Mm -hmm. Trying to make sure she knows this is good. This mm -hmm. isn't scary, but yeah, that's yeah. She'll she'll do well, and that, yeah. that's that's part of it too. Whether it's whether it's uh, something big like that, we made it. We made a decision. One of the bigger decisions." Um, to send uh, our kids to a Christian school from the public school system. Yeah. And uh, Noah's best friend was there already, had moved over there uh, or been there a few years, and, and he was he was kind of ready to, to, to go there. And our daughter was not. Um, she, she did not like that plan whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I, I, and the school they were in, good school, one of the best in the state. Um, so this would have been middle school, I guess. But, you know, we were... It's ninth grade for me. Yeah, so she would have been six or seven. When I got to high school, I just yeah. struggled. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, you know, we said, well, this, this is what we, we feel like we got to do. Because, um, you know, you watch, you're seeing your, your kids are hanging around with, and you don't, you don't have to see egregious stuff. You know, you, you, can, just, you can just tell. You can yeah. just tell. Yep, and so uh, we made that decision, and whew, yeah, it was a tough, tough one. Everything. But uh, she thrived there, of course, and ended up going back her junior year to back to the public school, and graduated, and handled that beautifully, hmm. right? Because it is a different environment. I yeah. mean, no matter. Yep. How much yeah. we all admit that or not, it's different. Homeschool, yeah. private Christian school, public school, yep. completely different. They're all different, yep. And she, um, going back, older, more mature, um, learning, um, you know, how she needed to act and do and those kinds of things, and thrived, thrived both ways. Yeah. Um, in her own, you know, continued personal walk, uh, as a Christian, but uh, in school as well. So yeah, tough decision. But it's that's what, like you said, what you're raising for. Yep. And there, there's a cute things along the way too. That's a big one, right? That's a yeah. big one and a very important one. Yep. And you want to see, like you said, you're you're ready. Um, bring it on. She's going to do great. So uh, yeah. and she will, and you're excited about that, you know. Yep. And and there's a lot of pride that you have in that too, yeah. right? Uh, yep. Whether it's in the longer term things, the shorter term things. You teach your your sons playing football. Yep. So. Um, I don't know if you were good at football or not. I can't imagine you were. Horrible. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's horrible. But but you know you you've, yeah. you've taught him what he yeah. knows to this More point, especially golfer. because you're the coach, mm -hmm. right? You're the coach of this team. Yeah, which yeah. makes sense, right? Hey, it, well, hey if you need clearly. advice about raising a football player, just see me after. Okay, yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to. <laughs> I Mostly, it, I want to know how you can afford it. <laughs> I think it's later in the questions where we get to the part about children having qualities where nobody has any idea where they came from. <laughs> Looking at the, the coaches are asking if I'm the stepfather. <laughs> father. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Are you Andre's brother? <laughs> Are you Andre's brother? <laughs> oh, no that's way good. he came out of you. <laughs> but you're so you're so nervous for him when you turn yeah. him loose, right? Whether it's something acute like a like a the football field, yeah. Or for him, I mean, there were several sports, um, but golf. You know, golf is where it was just, you know, just yeah, just tense and visceral because, well. On a football field, you make a mistake. Well, Dad saw it. Maybe a coach or two saw it. But but when you're playing golf, you're by yourself, yeah. right? Yep. And you know his first uh, few matches, oh, just it was you know because he would hit a bad shot yep. or you know goes out of bounds or whatever you know, um, and you just you know it just tears you up inside. But yeah. you're like, hey, he's what we. Trained him for, taught him to do, and sure enough, they do great. Yep. You know, they do great. Yep. It's kind of where you got to stand on, like, I've prepared you for this moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, yeah, we we prepare our kids for the best, but I don't know about y'all, but 
for me, like I want to prepare them for the worst. Like here, you know, as best as you can prepare for the worst so that when it comes, they're fully, they're ready. You know, Beckham, I told him when he started playing football, I'm like, there's going to be bigger kids than you. Get them pads on. Let's go to the backyard because I'm a big kid. <laughs> <laughs> we did the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say what happened, but, you know, <laughs> he got popped the first time in one of his games, and he's like, Dad, you're right. It hurts. <laughs> but he was right back out there, mm-hmm. you know. And there's other things in life where, you know, we mm-hmm. prepare for stuff like that. Um, I'm curious. We all, and no, not yet, but James, Pastor Gary, myself, all of us have sons and daughters, which is two totally separate dynamics. Um, I'm sure that all of our kids probably have separate personalities. And so what I want to know is how do you pull on the Holy Spirit or your relationship with Jesus to um, to navigate those waters? The different personalities or raising, different personalities different dynamics yeah yeah because uh, i mean there's a, there's definite differences uh mom's gonna have a different perspective on son and daughter dad's gonna have very different perspectives yeah um but in, in thinking back through it what it's the personalities that stand out probably more than um son versus daughter yeah uh, just the just the different personalities that you've got to adapt to and what makes who tick and what will upset, you know, uh, one and not the other. Um, and then, you know, you, you, you at first, uh, you're thankful, you know, here's healthy baby. Right. Um, and then you're, you're, uh, asking for help that you don't mess anything up. Right. You know, cause they're just a little baby. Yep. Um, were y'all nervous taking babies home the very first time? By the way, I don't. I'm sure I was, but I don't. Oh man, I I just I drove like it. three miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, just tense. Of course, Jamie was in the car, so every little turn, she's like, "Oh my goodness, I'm like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm taking it easy." Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I'm I'm sure we were. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the thing I remember more is when he wouldn't eat or wouldn't sleep. Yeah. That's the stuff that worried you to death yeah. right like is something you know what's wrong yeah. right when you decide something's wrong versus you're just fussy and that's the stuff i remember worrying about more than uh kind of the general stuff yeah but but you know you know how stuff stands out over time yeah yeah it's been 26 years <laughs> that's a few years <laughs> it's a lot of experience uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah we took we took josh out of university hospital and so we pull the car up and it's in the parking garage and the fumes are, you know, gathering. Yep. And we're, th- we're taking him out of this sterile, clean environment <laughs> into this, like, is he going to be okay? You yep. know, go, they go, oh, yeah, they're helping us put someone else's holding him while Audra gets in and puts him in all yep. that stuff. And you're just like, I don't want anybody else to touch him. Yeah. You know, he's so clean and so yep. everything is so controlled in there. Yeah. Yeah. And then driving out and you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> stopping at the stop sign for the right amount of pause. Oh, yeah. and, and then just getting home. Then we had a set of stairs on a split level oh, no. duplex to get up. <laughs> and so I'm carrying with both hands up the thing. <laughs> you get yeah. him in the house. It's just like, whew. yeah. And then Andre ended up taking him to the doctor because he wasn't crying. Like, <laughs> wow. She's like, something wrong with him? And he, hmm. the doctor just laughed like, oh, you better. <laughs> that's what's going to keep you from, or that's what's going to keep you having more kids is he's so chill. Yeah. And then we end up taking Grace to the doctor because she was crying all the time. <laughs> so it's just, it's just different. Yeah. It's just different with the personalities growing up. And you just learn how to, how they process things as they get older. Yeah. And teenage years, you know, it's. They go from little kid wanting to play with you in the front yard and throw the ball to, can you drop me off at the flagpole? Yeah, of course that was the kind of car, the truck I was driving at that point. <laughs> mm-hmm. It had like a mosquito fogger coming out of the exhaust <laughs> and stuff, and they were like yeah. 
Dad, can you let us off at the flagpole? We'll walk from here. <laughs> <laughs> so they wouldn't see anybody <laughs> letting them out of the truck. <laughs> yeah. But, Sorry, yeah. Go ahead. No, that's, that's it. You mentioned how, how, how you bring the Holy Spirit into that. And the thing that brought up in my, in my mind that I think is interesting how Cheryl and I had different takes on it. Now, we didn't sit down and plan this out. Yeah. Right? Yep. And, and of course, that comes from my background and her background and that kind sure. of stuff. But I can remember, um, you know, my prayers were, were there, there were probably, there were some things that were constant and long term. Yeah. Right. Yep. But I remember it being about um, the shorter term things. Right. Yeah. Now, obviously, if, if something's wrong or you're not sure about something or, you know, but, but, um, uh, as the dad, you're in charge of this little crew, yep. right? That 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 you're building right here. Yep. You're in charge of it. Safety. You're in charge of it. Um, uh, financially, you're in charge of it. You know all, all these different ways. Yeah. And so, uh, my my recollection is that, you know, my prayers and thoughts um, toward things were were more short short term. Yep. Whereas. Uh, Cheryl, hers were long term. Yep. Um, praying for the right husband. Yeah. Right wife from the time they were little bitty things. I'm not praying for a husband for my daughter when she's little bitty. <laughs> yeah. Right. I yeah. mean, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it's so just it was funny how we thought um, about different thought about things differently. Yeah. Um, when they were young like that. Pastor, you do the same thing? You and Audrey have the same? Yeah, she's more of the nurturer. I was more of the let's have fun and the disciplinary. What about the short-term, long-term praying? Uh, yeah, she she's prayed for their spouses forever. That's Me, I'm not so much until yeah. until they meet them, you know, yeah. and then it's it's more like that's not the one, this is the one, yeah. you know. That's interesting. I've often felt, um, I guess, guilty, you could say, because I don't pray into, like, the long-term things. But I am about today. Like, today, oh, they go to the swim pool today. So, like, how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to get you there? Let's make sure you're safe all the way there. Is the car, you know, so my mind's mm-hmm. in that mindset mm-hmm. more so than, I'm going to pray for your career, and obviously I will when the time comes. But so thanks for removing that off my shoulders. That's uh, that's real nice to know that I'm not the only one. Yeah, and and we've I mean we've never like had a complete debrief on that. I don't know what all she was praying for. Oh yeah, just where we yeah. talked, uh, you know, over the years and stuff like that. But I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to pay for college, and she's probably praying that something for their career. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just just. Just um, yeah, different Aud- different perspectives. Audra was more of a discerner of something going on, and she yeah. still is with yep. them. Like, you need to reach out to one of them, you yeah. know. And and I go, and I'm like, really? Uh, they seem fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. But <laughs> you'll reach out to them, and sure enough, something's going on. Or, I mean, she can she can pick it up just with them not even being around like when yeah. they were off in college or doing things and just you're like it's like you need to send some money or you need to call them up or we need to go down there and and sometimes I'll go just totally trusting what she's picking up and I'm not even picking up what she's saying you know yeah. she's trying to explain it to me and I'm just like okay I don't see it but Let's go. I did. Let's load up <laughs> on some cheeseburger. I mean, food was always my entryway. It's yeah. like, hey, can we take you out to eat? And it was always a, an acceptance, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, or here's yep. some cash, slip them some cash when they're in college, you know. And, yep. And um, so you just you just go after the connection, even though they're growing up, and yeah. even though they may, you want them to be comfortable coming to you with anything. Yeah. And not being shocked by that. You can be shocked in private, yeah, and process it in private. But to them, it's like, yeah, that happened. Okay, 
I well, think what are your what's your response to it? And draw it out of them instead of just telling them how to respond. Yeah, I think that's key. What you just said about um, about yeah. openness and them willing to come to you with the things, yeah. you know, all the stuff. I think you actually asked me one time when we were just oh, maybe we were setting this up or something. Anyways, um, about that, like what I thought. Um, I think I did. I remember. Yeah. And I was asking you how you handled like. Um, we were talking about music is what started it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about I mean, explicit rap. I mean, we both, not necessarily like explicit, but we both like rap music and yeah. listening to the just the greatness of the music and all that stuff. And so I was asking you how you handled that growing up. Yeah. Yeah, so growing up, or, yeah, growing to up. invite y'all into this conversation, growing up, it was 92.1 and that's it. Like, that's all we're listening to. And so... Which is what? And for those so, oh, that sorry. 92.1 is like Christian music. Um, K-Love. Type. Joy K-Love. FM. K-Love. Okay. Joy okay. FM is what it used to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to this day, I don't listen to that. <gasps> oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, then I had to hide my music. Well, I don't, I don't want my kids to have to hide stuff from me. Like, I want to build an open relationship where... So Beckham now, we have this thing where he asks me, because he wants to listen to rap music, you know, that's what all the kids listen to. And so he'll send me a song, and I'll read through the lyrics. And if the lyrics are decent, you can, I assume you all know how rap music is. Yeah. So <laughs> there's a lot of reading that has to happen yeah. and a lot of processing that has to happen. And there are a lot of no's, but there are some yeses. Um, but I didn't get there that him asking me these questions by enforcing this, right? It like it comes with openness and it's the small things. And I think that's what I got to that day was yeah. it's the moments, in my opinion, I feel like when Beckham or Briley, either one, will ask me. So Beckham likes to play catch. Briley likes to go to Target. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in the moments when I don't want to. I don't want to get out of the house and go to Target, but she does. So I say yes. And it's in the it's in those yeses, those small yeses where it, I know we're not buying anything at Target, you know, nothing. She's not going to buy anything. She just wants to go look. So we'll go look. But in the car ride on the way there, conversation happens and in Target conversation happens. Not all the time, but most of the time. But it's the small moments like that, just like Jesus, I think. Or it's the tiny moments that you realize, oh my gosh, he's really with us. He's really with me in this moment. And that lead to those open moments where they can trust you. Mm -hmm. Ours was Claire's. You know what a Claire's is? Oh, yeah. That's where I got my ears pierced, if you believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yeah. And it it would have been that 12, 13, 14, Mm -hmm. you know. like no and I, we didn't we didn't have to manufacture things to go do. Yeah, right. I mean, it's we're by like you told me we're yeah. by like default doing stuff. Yeah, you know. Um, but yeah, Shelby, uh, you know, we plan a date, um, and you're accomplishing a lot there. But uh, plan, but that was that was her thing was was Claire's. We'd go to Claire's and uh, go eat and go to Claire's and uh, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. I really had to pray into the Target trips Um, because I was like, she's, you know, from like 10 to, what is it, 13, that age is like, it's a transition, it's weird, and I'm a dad, you're my daughter. you're a guy. Yeah, it's like, it's just this weird transition, not that she doesn't, you know, not that our relationship was anything, it's just a weird transition. Mm -hmm. So, like... I felt that in my heart and I just had to start praying through it. Like, God, what, like you said, the connection between a father and son just happens. It's just there. But between father and daughter, which again, you and Shelby, you and Grace, me and Bri, you have the connection, but it's different. And so I was like, Holy Spirit, what do we do here? And so take her to Target. All right, here we go. We're going to Target. (laughs) So now we go to Target like, two or three times a week. <laughs> yeah. 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 They love us there. <laughs> <laughs> if you had to sum up your, um, this is going to be a tough question. 
our way. But it's going to be a good one. <laughs> if you had to sum up your core of who you are as a father in one statement, packages up, package it up and give it to somebody to use, hmm. what would that be? Is this limited to like one word? No. One sentence? No. I think you said no. one sentence. Let's just package statement. it up in a... Hmm. I'm, we can't be here for two oh, hours, James. This, this, is one of the, this is yeah. This is one of those things that could 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 go on for a long time, right? Because yeah. there's this stuff we've been talking about, right? Where you want to be um, the provider, you want to have the good the, the a good balance of teaching kids, sometimes discipline your kids, and um, developing a close relationship with your kids. That's that's a balance. It's different for every kid. And it's different yeah. for every. You know all that kind of stuff. That that's kind of stuff you um, would would want, right? I yeah. mean, and there is there's definitely a big aspect of preparing them for um, the decisions they make later on. Whether it's going to freshman, uh, uh, you know, high school, that's a big decision. Yeah. But then you're going to drop them off at college one day, right? Yeah. And and uh, that's that's a whole new world. Yeah. Right. And and part of you has to transition from a lot of you has to transition from protecting worrying yeah. about what they're doing day in and day out yep. uh, not because you're hovering but because you know that's that's kind of to okay I've, I've I've done my job you know here we are let's, let's see let's <laughs> see what happens and, and you know they're gonna be fine yeah but uh, um, you know you prepare them being a parent is is uh, one of the few things that if if you do it right, you're the one that gets hurt at the end. Yeah. Mm. You know, you, you send them off. Um, but then there's, you're going to make mistakes too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so you, you're an example whether you mean to be or not. We all know that. Yeah. Right? And you want to be that example. Yeah. Right? Um, but you're going to mess things up. Yeah. And you want to have the, the relationship where um, your kids can reconcile with you, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that's that's the harder part. That's yeah. the part. Do you plan for that? or I, I don't know. Or does it come from the way you do the other stuff? You know, I, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. I, you raise them in a way that they can raise others, raise their kids and their family. Yeah. And you just hope that you've done enough. You never think you've done enough. But, yeah, I agree with him. It's like you're the one that's going to get hurt, but you don't want to ever let them know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, and it's not a hurt like you hurt me. It, it just – it's a transition. It's a separation where you can't be in their business. Their your goal is to to create to raise them to be a successful family as their own entity. Yeah. But you also want to keep the the connection to where they always want to come home, not that they have to come home for the holidays or. Uh, whatever yeah. to get together but they want to they want to come see you and you have to let that thing grow on its own you can't that can't be a force thing um, you, you just you just want to maintain a relationship but it's in a different it's a it's just a different phase you enter into and there's not a necessarily a certain date of demarcation or a line in the sand it's just a you wake up one morning and they're grown and you're going to their high school graduation or their college graduation or their wedding or and our new grandbaby our, our new <laughs> grandbaby you wake up and you're like man how did it get here so fast i mean the days are long but the years are short yeah. you know and it's like man it's um uh, the, the monotony of driving them to school, picking them up, driving them to practice, picking them up, the getting their all their stuff, the doing their uh, school project the night before because they forgot to tell you, you know, and uh, going to Walmart to get the poster board and all that stuff. It's it's the 
all that stuff is not fun. You yeah. would never write a book about that. <laughs> but um, getting to that point where it's just a joy to be around them as grown adults and hearing them process life and helping them without helping them when they want advice without just doing it for them as, yeah. as you would with a kid. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. Sometimes you, you got to hold easy. back. It's easy you to know? jump in and mm -hmm. say, well, you can fix that or don't yeah. do that. I just do it that like for, this. I did that for 10 years. Don't do it. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. but you just have to let them, a few as long things. as they're not in danger or something like that, you know. Sure. But, yeah. A few things Noah's asked. I, uh, you know, I, I can tell a little bit he's like, you know, I'm not nervous enough about the baby coming in. Because <laughs> he's on this whole other level of, you know. Yeah. And um, now, you know, the immediate, the immediate thing you think is, well, I'm the, I'm the, Granddad, not the, and that's a whole different deal, right? Yeah. But um, he was built for this. So, you know, I get to be fun. Yeah. And if he needs something, I'll ask, right? But yeah. I'm not going to tell him, you know, if you put a diaper on there backwards and he pees all over the place, hey, that's a great story. I'm not going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, because, uh, uh, and that's the way it is a lot of things. You know, the baby's in, in, important, certainly, but a lot of stuff, you know, you, you, yeah, there's a better way to do it. But, you know, hey, go get and, your own. You got your way. Yeah, make yeah. it your own. You, you, yeah. Um, well, him and, him and Hannah both, his wife, you know, I, I, I know how conscientious they are. And, you know, everything I've taught him, like when I taught him to drive, how he, the responsibility. So I, I don't, it's just going to be fun. Yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. So it's my it's my whole goal here. Just to be fun? Well, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> I send, I send uh, Cheryl and I send, like, TikToks back and forth yeah. uh, about stuff all the time. But You sure they're not Facebook Reels? I've got this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, we're ahead of Facebook Reels. Probably more Instagram. <laughs> um, but it's my whole goal to have the kids – it's this, it's this little reel or, or you yeah. know, video where the parents bring the kid to the grandparents' house, a little toddler. Yep. And, uh, you know, there's grandma. You see grandma. Uh -huh. and, and then the kid runs, and grandma's right here, runs right around grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. That's fun. Yep. She don't like them like I do. <laughs> I like that video most fun as she does. <laughs> I keep sending it. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, technology is amazing. Um, we've been granted a gift tonight. You know, we get to mark in history. And not only for, there's been lots of good advice and experience and knowledge shared tonight. Um, so that's going to, that'll benefit multiple people. But what's fun is this goes down in history and Roman gets to listen to this conversation. You know, mm -hmm. I can't say, and, and how awesome is it that your kids, Pastor Gary, get to listen to your heart for, if they want it, mm -hmm. they can go, go on the internet and get all of the revelation that the Holy Spirit has poured into your heart. Um, I just cherish that. I think it's amazing where we're at technology wise like i wish my grandpa would have wrote a book I wish my dad would write a book just about his experience yeah. and just about fatherhood and about how god worked through you to raise the family and you know so we're granted this great opportunity and i i just i can't I, say yeah i didn't really think about that roman we like the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> we do not like the Chicago Bears. The future Roman. This will not age well. Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> okay. Tennessee. You want to throw that in there, too? Oh, well, that'll be a, we don't. We yeah. don't have controversy on that, yeah, that be, part. Yeah. Well, Dallas and Chicago are, are both horrible options, Roman. <laughs> but. Go Chiefs. Yeah. For now. No, not. I, I did not just agree to go Chiefs. <laughs> For any of my yeah, Packers yeah, fans yeah, listening, yeah, that was yeah, a so. Yeah, we better wrap this thing up. <laughs> um, 
In closing. I have have, uh, a purchased, um, what's called the thing they put in their mouth? Passy? Yeah, a little pacifier. Okay. So I've got a Dallas Cowboy pacifier. Yep. (laughs) And a Chicago Bear pacifier. Okay. And we'll just let him make the decision. Now, maybe they're holding one. Well. But, you know, he gets a, a choice in the whole thing. Dip one of them in vinegar. So they spit it out. <laughs> Who knows? They go one in sugar water. I'm right. Hot sauce. I, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. But uh, there's a choice to be made, and yeah. we're preparing for it. <laughs> I do. Um, I really thank you all. Thanks for being vulnerable. Sometimes it's not easy to talk about dad stuff. Um, sometimes it's not easy to talk about parenthood. Some of us aren't quite ready to talk about what we're walking through, you know. Um, and so I think it's huge. So thank you, Pastor Gary. Thank you, James. Thank you. Noah, I think you're ready, dude. I do, too. This is going to be awesome. I'm excited either way, whether I'm ready or not. Yeah, nobody's ready, right? <laughs> the straps go in the back, by the way, of the diaper. Velcro on the back. Velcro on the back. Yep, Velcro on the back. If you follow that, you'll have at least one good story. (laughs) Would you mind praying, closing us out? Mm -hmm. Uh, Pray for young dads, current dads. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. Father in heaven, we thank you for this uh, this time just to sit around and talk. And um, uh, it's such a great blessing you gave us um, to to be fathers and to to be able to... um, raise our kids uh and you give us you give us um so much through what you do for us that um we can we can pass down and that's it's such a great blessing and that's that's one of those things that's uh so enjoyable to see uh and we thank you for that it's it's such a blessing and um we do have almost to be dads and new dads and, and uh, old dads and just just so much, so much um, wisdom and blessings um, that you've given us. And, and we thank you for that. And we want to we want to pray for um, your your peace on Noah and uh, your guidance and, and that he'll have the the comfort of of knowing that he's going to be great he's going to do great and so many others out there too lord we ask that you'll give them uh, the same confidence and and know that whatever uh, whatever comes their way and it'll come it'll come um, that foundation in you and what you want um, them to know will work out in the end every time Father, I thank you for these for these men here in their time, and thank you for our our, our church here at the Revolution, Lord. And um, we just pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen.